G'day, I'm Ross Wormersley and I'm the CEO of SACOS, the South Australian Council of Social Service. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that I'm streaming to you today on the lands of the Ghana people. Always was, always is and always will be Ghana land. And I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. The report we're launching today with our colleagues from the Southgate Institute is due in part to SACOS's strong and abiding sense that many face unnecessarily harsh health issues due to, the so due to socioeconomic factors. Not everyone will be aware of the correlations of poor health outcomes with unstable income, but the SA The Heaps Unfair State Report highlights this with precision and from new statistical research. It's of utmost importance that we investigate not only how health inequities impact on those who are missing out on adequate health care, but how unequal health outcomes are an integrated system of economic, government, education and housing challenges. We've faced a very strange past few weeks with COVID-19 and are yet to fully understand the impact of how this will affect us. What we've seen ref reflected very quickly is that the global trend in underemployment and underutilisation rates, lack of accessible health care and lack of adequate social security payments are hurting us immensely. We are struggling to recalibrate to a society that can distance itself and yet stay connected that can share resources during disasters like bushfires, but is coming to blows over toilet paper or someone's race in a situation like COVID. Many of the actions that we've seen in response to this dreadful virus arise from fear. We're now in a rare time where more people are, are afraid of poor health and morbidity than they normally would be. Imagine though if you lived with this fear all the time. The Heaps Unfair report shows that the rate of premature deaths in the most socio-economically disadvantaged areas of South Australia is now over twice the rate of premature deaths in the most socio-economically advantaged areas of South Australia. And this was a finding pre-COVID. While this report highlights the drivers of inequities, it also suggests a number of recommendations that we think are really worth taking seriously, particularly at this time when we're experiencing a communal fear of unknown outcomes. Firstly, to achieve any of these better outcomes, our South Australian Government has to have the money available to invest in the vital services that we require and need as a community. And the only way that this can happen is if they can maintain and build an adequate state tax base to fund those services. We can only ever have a strong response to issues like this virus if and when we have the right community infrastructure in place to protect public health. Within our health sector, we have a range of things that we need, like we have to create a statewide health equity monitoring and policy system. We have to establish a program of comprehensive primary health care centres across South Australia. We need increased investment in critical areas like early childhood development and early intervention. And we need to target more funding to specific groups like the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander con Community Controlled Health Services. We must also expand the South Australian Health in All Policies initiative to enhance intersectoral collaboration so that health really is being thought about in all aspects of community and government life. Further to this, the COVID-19 crisis has really underlined how vital it is for us to urgently address the digital divide. In the health sector and in all aspects of daily life, digital inclusion is of critical importance, particularly at this time. 
Just reflect for a moment on those pictures of long queues of people trying to access their Centrelink offices, or indeed the collapse of the online platform because it was never designed for so many people trying to access it at once. As we continue in self-quarantine, isolation and working, schooling from home, it's going to become ever more evident that we need to enact strategies to ensure digital inclusion so everyone can benefit from these new digital platforms and technologies. As well as being connected online, households need to remain connected to essential services. Our energy companies and governments must do better to support waged poor households, tenants and other people living in vulnerable circumstances. The needs of low income households should be prioritised as, as highly as any other household. Instead of focusing on the economy from a simple profit and loss point of view, we need to consider the economy of social justice and what this adds to us as a people and as a community. It's time to introduce a concept of a wellness budget, to adopt alternative ways to measure South Australia's progress and to ensure that social infrastructure is afforded just as much importance as physical infrastructure. The soon to be released SA infrastructure plan must include plans for metropolitan, regional and rural areas of South Australia that go beyond the installation of roads and buildings to thinking about the other forms of infrastructure that help communities thrive rather than just survive. We have to make renewed investments in well located, energy efficient and affordable housing. We need a deep investment in public housing because housing and its quality of course plays such a strong role in determining people's health and well-being. We also need to ensure that all South Australians have enough money to meet their basic needs, whether they're receiving allowances, juggling employment prospects or employed consistently. This will mean indexing all social security payments to the average wage index at a minimum and ensuring that they maintain pace with community standards. It means permanently raising the job seeker, youth allowance and other social security payments to reduce poverty and health inequities. It means supporting a single parent supplement benchmark to the cost of children as they age and abolishing compulsory income management systems. Finally, in the community and non-government sector, the state and federal governments must increase the availability of these vital community services. Establish a set of values in all government contracts that recognise the long-term unique contribution to community development that so many of our not-for-profits and NGOs make. And we also believe they should provide SACOS with the resources to enable us to coordinate the development of a long-term plan for the community and non-government organisation sector in South Australia. One that incorporates workforce development, considers what the South Australian community sector should look like and how it differs from but can also complement the important work of our public sector. I'm proud of the report that we've produced. I will be far prouder if we can use it to leverage um, action that ensures our governments and our communities live up to the recommendations that we've made. What better time to start making these necessary improvements than now? With my thanks.